Welcome to today's message of the Bible GPS. Today's message was actually inspired by my son. So I told my son the other day, you know, dad needs to record a message. And he said, dad, why don't you talk about that passage, what God requires from us, the works that God required. And I said, you know what, dad, that's a good idea. So where's that exactly in the, in the Bible? And he said, it is in John chapter 6, verse 29. So that will be our focus. But I did ask my son, but why is that such a nice passage for you? He said, because this is what life is about. And then I said, or ask him, but when did you read that passage? He said, probably a year ago. So then I realized, but that passage must have made a huge impact on him. And when I was reading that and studying it a little bit and meditate on it, then I realized why he would see that passage as such an important passage in his life, especially in the lives of younger people. But before we go going to focus on that passage, let us just bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, we want to thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you, Lord, that you are a loving and a caring God. Thank you, Lord, that we can focus on your word and know that your word will set us free. I pray for open hearts, open minds and open ears, Lord that we can listen so that your word can take deep root in our hearts. Amen. Well, this is a beautiful passage which we get in John chapter 6, verse 29. It was just after the crowds just followed Jesus. Jesus walked on the water. He gave them bread to eat and they were just amazed about what Jesus was doing. And then they had a question for Jesus and that you get in John chapter 6, verse 28. Before we get to verse 29, it says, Then they ask him, What must we do to do the works God requires? So in a different way to put it, what does God requires of humanity? And maybe one can say, What is the main thing? And it's important that the main thing needs to be the main thing in our lives. Otherwise, we can be so distracted. So they were actually asking Jesus, what is the main thing in life? And then Jesus answered in verse 29, it says, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. Now we know that the one he has sent is Jesus himself. So he was actually talking about himself. So the main thing is that we need to believe in Jesus Christ. And then I realized why my son really loved this passage so much. Because in today's life, people are overwhelmed. The advertisement world, you know, if young people need to pick careers, they are so confused. So many young people don't know in which direction they want to go because it's overwhelming. And the choices they need to make on so many levels of life, it is just overwhelming. Life is complex. And with this question and answer, Jesus really cut through the complexity of life and say, you know what? The work of God is the following, that you need to believe in the one whom he has sent, which is Jesus Christ. God sent Jesus Christ to this world. And we need to believe that. Now, why is it such an important thing for God that we need to believe in Jesus? Well, I think the answer is in the previous verse, that is verse 27. It says there when Jesus told the crowd, Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life. Now, Jesus was referring to himself that he is the bread of life. You know, we can work so hard and make money, but that's the food of life. But Jesus is the food of eternal life. And that reminds me of a story which I've told multiple times, but it's always good to hear it. There was a king who had asked his wise people to take some time and to find one sentence that is short enough that he can engrave on his ring. Because every time he wants to look at it, it needs to motivate him. It needs to motivate him when he walks through his luxurious palace, when he sees when he sees all his wealth, it needs to motivate him when he cannot sleep at night because he's anxious. So that one sentence needs to be so wise that it needs to motivate him and speak to him wisdom in all circumstances. And then the wise people went away and they came back later and they said to the king, 
we think we have found that one sentence. And the king was surprised. He said, okay, what is that one sentence? And then they said, that sentence is what we think is the wisdom that you need to engrave on your ring. And then the king said, but please let me know what it is. And then they said, then they said this too shall pass. This too shall pass. Everything in life is temporary. This too shall pass. Your anxiety, your wealth, even your life, this too shall pass. And then Jesus was brilliant when they asked him in the next verse 28, but what is the work of God? Then, G then Jesus said, it is to believe in the one who has sent me. Because if you believe in Jesus, he connects you to eternity. Nothing else in this world can connect you to eternity. Everything will pass except the love that Jesus has for you. John 3.16 summarizes it very well. And that's also from the book of John, where John says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, so that we can believe in him and have eternal life. So God had sent Jesus Christ to connect us to eternal life. That is why there is heaven. Because the love of God endures forever. It cannot come to an end. Even when we die. The Bible says it very well. Not death can separate us from the love that we have in Jesus. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. So that is why it's the main thing to believe in Jesus. Because Jesus connects us to eternity. Nothing else. And that brings me to the other thing, the question. What does it mean to believe in Jesus? Because it sounds like a sweeping statement. We need to believe. Because so many people believe in Jesus. But what does it mean to believe in Jesus? Now that takes me to other passage written by Paul in the chapter 2 of Philippians. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 where Paul says something striking. It sounds a little bit strange. It doesn't make sense in the beginning when Paul says that we need to work out our salvation. Now young people, well older people as well, but they like to work out. They like to go to the gym. My son likes to go to the gym. And I was thinking, you know what? He believes in Jesus, but he also likes to work out. And then Paul says that we need to work out our salvation. And then it sounds strange because the same Paul said that we are only saved by God's grace. But now he says we need to work out our salvation, our faith. What does he mean by that? He doesn't say in Philippians 2 verse 12 that we need to work for our salvation. It means, he actually means that we need to work out our salvation. I want to explain it like this. When you go to the gym, you take your body for a workout. And when you take your body for a workout, it is not to get a body. You already have a body, but you just take it for a workout. Same with salvation. Same with faith in Jesus. You have faith, but you just work it out. God has put something in you that you need to work out. God has put eternity in you. God has put love in you, but you need to work it out. So you have muscles, but you need to work it out. So you go to the gym to work out your body, not to get a body, but because you have a body. The same with salvation. You work it out. You exercise it, not to get it, it's because you have it. So what does that mean? That means that we need to spend time with God's Word to get more wisdom because there's so much things that are coming our way that's not from God. So it helps us to discern. We need to pray to God. We need to learn how to pray better. We need to understand God's Word better. So we need to grow in our spiritual life to become stronger because the storms of this life can sometimes be so heavy. And this is what it means to work out your faith. If you go to a small group, it's a way to work out your faith. If you listen to a message, that is the way you work out your faith. Not to get it, but because you have it. It's like the gym. You go to the gym not to get a body, but because you have a body. But you need to exercise it. You need to work it out so that you can be strong and pick up things and have a, a, 
a, a better strength that you're not short of breath when you walk up the stairs so that you can live life in the fullest. So we need to exercise our faith. So Jesus is actually saying to the crowd that the work of God is to believe in Jesus. So Jesus is actually saying that he is the answer. But what is the question? If Jesus is the answer, what is the question? Well, we need to realize that Jesus is not the answer to everything. Jesus is not the answer to the math question. What is two times two? The answer is not Jesus. It is four. Or it's like the new pastor who went to the Sunday school class. There were young kids and he said, what is brown, furry and has a big tail? And then the one girl raised her hand. She said, the answer is Jesus. But in my mind, I had a squirrel. I think it's a squirrel, but it's probably Jesus. No, it's not. The answer is not Jesus. Jesus is not the answer for everything. But Jesus is the answer to experience eternal life. Jesus is the answer to gain more wisdom, to experience purpose in life. I officiate tomorrow at a funeral. And I always quote that beautiful verse also from the book of John, where Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even when they die. I don't bring people a, a philosophy. I don't bring people a body position. I share with them the person of Jesus Christ, the one that was sent by God. Because if you believe in him, the Bible says, then you have eternal life, even when you die. Everything will pass in this world, but one thing will not. The love that Jesus has for you and your faith, because your faith in Jesus that you work out will give you eternal life. That is the only path to eternal life, to be with God. Now, you're at the Bible GPS we have a 10-week discipleship course. We have 20 videos you can download from our website, www.thebiblegps.com, the free ebook and or the PDF book. So you can follow along with the book and the videos. More about God's Word. It's a free course, 10-week discipleship course. You can do it in groups of three or you can do it even on your own. You can also order the book from Amazon if you don't want to have the PDF file. But there are so many ways that we can work out our faith. We just get to get stronger in our faith. We live in challenging times. But in this complexity, I'm so thankful that my son gave me this verse. Because that is the main thing. Is to have faith in Jesus Christ. Matthew 16 says... In verse 26, I think it says that what does it help you to gain the whole world, but you forfeit your soul? What does it help you to become the CEO, to make millions, to make billions, to, to go in space? What does that help you if you forfeit your soul? Keep the main thing, the main thing, and that is your faith in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word that we don't need to doubt your love for us. Thank you, Lord, that we can believe in you and that we can work out our salvation, not work for it, but work it out because we already have it by prayer, by studying your word, by listening to messages, just by being aware of what's going on in society and know that the main thing is our relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. So wherever you are, God has placed you. God has placed you with Jesus in your heart. You have faith. You believe in Jesus. And wherever you go, God is sending you to work out your faith. God is sending you to a church building to listen to worship music, to listen to a message, to serve at the church, at the soup kitchen, or to be in your living room or, or wherever, just to pray to God. There are so many ways that we can work out our faith. 
But just to believe in Jesus is not enough. You need to work it out. Because when you believe, it's like saying, I believe in exercise. But it doesn't mean that you exercise. If you say you believe in exercise, you need to exercise. Otherwise, it means nothing. If we say we believe in Jesus, we need to exercise our faith. God bless you.